video let us discuss about repo rate as well as reverse repo rate actually repo rate means repo means repurchase of bonds repurchase of bonds this term repurchase is nothing but repo so the rate at which RBI repurchases the bonds is nothing but repo rate actual definition this is the actual definition the rate at which RBA repurchases the bonds is nothing but repo rate why it is meant for why this repo rate is meant for see banks usually they will get some short of funds when they are short of funds, if the banks wants to have some loan or if they want to borrow some money, their last source is RBA. When they approach RBA for a loan, how RBA issues them loans? Actually, government securities or bonds are holded by usually banks and financial institutions as I already told you among the SLR some portion is to be in the form of government securities and bonds but when the banks need money they guarantee those government securities to RBI and in return of that government securities they take a loan from the RBI so in this process this repo rate is used during this process of banks getting loan from RBI RBI repurchases the bonds from banks and gives them the loan on the guarantee of these government securities now if you clearly understand why this term repurchase was used means actually those bonds are issued by RBI itself in the past when the RBI issues those bonds the banks through a competitive bidding process they get these bonds or government securities from RBI in an auction and now that government securities will be held by the banks but when the banks need some money and when they are short of money they use the same government securities as a guarantee to RBI and take a loan from RBI but this will not affect their previous deal of the same government security with RBI if the banks are getting a loan with a guarantee of these government securities or bonds from RBI this process is not going to affect their previous deal of their buying from RBI these government securities that process will not be affected but when they borrow these government securities or bonds sorry when they buy these government securities or bonds from RBI they have been given full rights on that bonds so using that rights now they are mortgaging those bonds with RBI and they are getting the money this is a flexible system of money adjustment between RBI and banks in this process when the banks need a loan they take the loan from RBI by guaranteeing some government securities or bonds to RBI and during this process the interest rate paid by banks to RBI on that loan is the repo rate so repo rate is the interest rate paid by banks on the loan taken from RBI so if this is the actual definition usually we study it in books as repo rate means the rate at which the RBI lends money to the banks repo rate means it is the rate at which RBI lends money to the banks. 
Yes, it's correct in simple terms. But if you want to go, what actually it means means repo means repurchase of bonds. In the past, regularly, not in the past, regularly, RBI will issue government securities and bonds. I already told you while explaining you about SLR that government securities or bonds are the most secured and immediate liquefiable cash. So, since they are very secured and since they are risk free, the banks run behind RBI for such government securities and bonds. And these government securities and bonds also as per the RBI's rule, they should occupy at least 40% of the total SLR maintained by the government banks. So due to that rule, the banks just run behind the RBI for acquiring the government securities or bonds. When these banks buy the government securities or bonds from RBI, these banks or financial institutions, they get full rights and powers to use the government securities at whatever the extent or rate they want. We call this as tradable government securities or bonds. Always government securities or, or bonds are tradable. So now the banks who bought these bonds from RBI, when they are short of funds, they use the same bonds as a guarantee to the actual mother of bonds, to the actual mother of bonds, that is RBI, as a guarantee. And on the guarantee of these government securities or bonds, these banks will get a loan. So, on that loan, this repo rate, which is the interest rate, is levied by RBI. So, that is why repo means repurchase of bonds. Now, <coughs> in this video itself, after the completion of this reverse repo, I will explain you what are bonds, what are government securities and how they are issued and etc etc. Now, let us jump to reverse repo. Reverse repo is nothing but reverse of repo. That means, now, when the banks are having excess amount of money, this excess amount of money should be invested somewhere. But when the banks are not finding any profitable and secured way of investing this excess amount, then the banks will park this money with RBA. That means simply banks are giving loan to RBA. This RBA taking the money as a loan from the banks, it promises to give the bank some interest rate and that interest rate paid by RBI to banks is the reverse repo rate. If you observe the process, it is just quite opposite to repo. In repo, banks take the loan from RBI. In reverse repo, RBI takes the loan from banks. So, repo and reverse repo are nothing but they are interest rates. What, what sort of interest rates? Repo rate is the interest rate levied by RBI on the banks, on the loans taken by those banks from RBI. And what is reverse repo rate? This is also the interest rate paid by RBI to the banks on the loans taken by RBI from banks. So, this is the way you should understand. And one more thing you should remember, always reverse repo rate, always reverse repo rate is lower than repo. Repo is always higher. How much is the difference between repo and reverse repo? Actually, RBI in its credit policy in the past, it used to regularly announce what is repo rate and what is the reverse repo rate. But from 2011 May onwards, RBI said that only repo rate will be announced 
and this reverse repo rate should be considered 100 basis points below of repo rate 100 basis points below of repo rate so repo rate is higher compared with reverse repo rate what is this 100 basis points it is nothing but a measurement and in calculation it is nothing but 0.01% 0.01% is nothing but basis points so 100 basis points means 0.01% that's it so remember always repo rate is higher reverse repo rate is 0.01% or 100 basal points lower than repo rate I hope you understood these five uh, principles uh, CRR, SLR, bank rate, repo rate, reverse repo rate. Uh, now, these days, bank rate is not playing a crucial role. CRR, SLR, and mostly repo rate and reverse repo rate. And apart from this, marginal standing facility, MSF, marginal standing facility and liquidity adjustment facility msf laf are the other two important terms recently introduced by rbi we will be discussing them in the this video itself and they are now playing very crucial role in controlling inflation as well as currency supply and they are occupying a uh, key role in the credit policy of rbi these days but before going to them first let me clear you, about, clear you about bonds then you will get a clear idea how the system is running now let us discuss about bonds i hope you understood repo and reverse repo so usually in paper we see that rbi issued some bonds or government issued some bonds of value 1000 crores, 2000 crores, something around 3000 crores. So what are these bonds actually? So bonds are nothing but obligatory debt acknowledgement of government. What are they? Bonds are obligatory, bonds are obligatory debt acknowledgement of governments Government securities or bonds means nothing but obligatory debt acknowledgement of government. So let us understand what is this term. Obligatory means by law. No choice, it is by law. Debt, you know, borrowing. Acknowledgement means a confirmation that something is taken. That's nothing but a confirmation that an amount is borrowed by government by law and that confirmation or acknowledgement is nothing but a government security or a bond if you want to understand it in common sense in vague terms a promissory note issued by government for some loan that's it so I want to take some loan uh, from a private investor or from a bank I need to write an agreement uh, we call it as a promissory note so for a person it is a promissory note for a 
country or for a government in economic terms the same thing instead of speaking it in vague terms if we want to speak it in economic terms a promissory note or a guarantee note issued by government for some loan is nothing but a government security or bond that definition in economic terminology is obligatory debt acknowledgement in the sense obligatory means i'm writing here what is this meaning obligatory means by law so it is permitted by law no choice next debt you know it is borrowing next acknowledgement means confirmation Confirmation given by whom? Whose bonds are securities they are? They are the government bonds or government securities. So, confirmation, confirmation by government, confirmation by government of its borrowing by law is nothing but government securities or bonds. Now, how the government issues us these government securities or bonds? Governments solely they won't issue the securities or bonds, but they had the full right in taking the decision. And on behalf of the government, on behalf of the government, it is public debt office that is PDO public. Debt Office of RBI, Public Debt Office of RBI will take care of issuing these government securities and bonds and collecting the money, borrowed money in the form, uh, I am saying it as borrowed money, but we should not say that it is borrowed money. Government securities and bonds are sold and that money is nothing but the debt of government but in understanding only we should consider them as debt or borrowing but we should say the government securities or bonds are issued by government and since they are sold out money has been taken so issuing of these government securities or bonds and collecting the money on behalf of them and paying the interest rates regularly paying the interest regularly to the uh, bond holders all these activities are carried out by public debt office pdo of rbi and now let us understand what uh, what are these government securities and bonds are there any different types and how they are issued and to whom they are issued so now i hope you got a clarity Government securities or bonds are nothing but confirmation of a borrowing by government either from banks or from high level financial institutions or from big players. Okay, now let us discuss. Usually, <coughs> government securities or bonds are issued on short term basis and on long term basis. short-term basis, long-term basis. Government securities issued on a short-term basis are called bills. Government securities issued on a short-term basis are called bills. And government securities issued on a long term basis above a year long term basis in the sense above a year are called
bonds. They are above one year. So, government securities issued government securities issued for a short period are called bills. Government securities issued on a long term basis for above a year are called bonds. Now, who have been given the power to issue bills as well as bonds? Both state governments as well as central governments can issue bonds. Both state governments as well as central government can issue bonds. But bills cannot be issued by state governments. Bills are the sole proprietary of central government. State governments have no right to issue bills. Why? Why state governments didn't have right to issue bills? Because I am simply telling you the name as bills. But the actual name of this bills is treasury bills. The actual name is treasury bills. In short form, we call these bills as T-bills. We call in short form them as T-bills. T-bills means treasury bills. Government securities issued for a short period. Government securities issued for a short period are called treasury bills. And these treasury bills can only be issued by central government. State governments didn't have right to issue the treasury bills. And these treasury bills are issued on three categorical basis depending upon the term. Three categorical basis depending upon the term. What are the three categories? T bills of very short period. 91 days. And T bills of short period. 182 days. And T bills of short period. 364 days. 364 days. That means bills of a particular value will be issued and the same bills will be taken back by government government in the sense RBI on behalf of government so RBI will take back those bills after a particular maturity date and that maturity date is nothing but in the first category 91st day is the maturing date in the second category 182nd date is the maturing date in the third category, 364th date is the 364th day is the maturing day. Now, what is the profit for those who takes these bills? What is the profit? The profit is <coughs> interest that they get on these bills. But to let you understand, I am using this term interest. We use this term interest on loans taken by individuals or corporations or institutions. But the loans taken by government in the form of bonds will pay an interest rate. But we are not supported to call it as interest rate. The term we should use is coupon rate. The interest paid by government to these bills, to these bills on the maturity day is called a Coupon rate, you are not supposed to call it as an interest rate. We should call it as coupon rate. So that coupon rate, which means profit in the form of interest, that coupon rate is the profit of the bill holder who just get this bill in the auction will have a profit, will have a profit in the form of coupon rate. But this coupon rate has many restrictions. 
uh, after explaining you about these bonds, I will explain you what are the restrictions in that coupon rate. First, let us understand this. So, that coupon rate is the profit. Moreover, the other profit is by taking these bills, either banks or the financial institutions or big players, they, they are helping the government by giving money in the form of a loan by taking these bonds. Since they are helping the government, they will be exempted according to rules from tax payments. So, the yield or the profit that they are getting from these bills will be exempted according to the extent of rules from the taxes. So, the tax exemption and the coupon rate paid by the government is the profit. Moreover, you know what is the logic actually here? Government securities or bonds or T-bills are the most secured. Why? Government cannot show empty hands to the people or to banks or to institutions. It is very tough to expect such a situation. However, the government adjusts uh, the money and pay back the loan. So, they are the most secured form of investment. So, they are the most attractive form of investment. So, the banks and the big financial institutions and big retail players, they run behind these government securities or bonds and take the bills and lend some money to the government. Now, let me explain you some more. Let us understand something about this coupon rate. I already told you the coupon rate means the interest paid by government that is RBI on behalf of government to the bond holders or to the bill holders is nothing but the coupon rate. Now this coupon rate which means the interest rate has some different forms. What are the different forms? Zero coupon, fixed coupon, floating coupon. What is this? Nothing but. See, sometimes the government securities will be issued saying that there will not be any interest. That means there will not be any coupon rate. So, you take the bill, but government is not going to pay you any interest. That is, it is not going to pay you any coupon that means there is no profit zero coupon that means government is not going to pay you any any interest then what is the profitability in buying that bill but there is a profitability that is when the government securities are issued in the form of zero coupon then we call them as Discounted bills. We call them as discounted bill. What is this zero coupon and what is this discounted bill? It may look a little bit confusion for you. Let me explain you with an example. See, government had issued a government security that is a bill of 100 crores. Of 100 crores. So, this is the government security or bill issued for 100 crores and the government announced that this is a zero coupon bill that means I am not going to pay you any interest so that is a zero coupon bill 
so this 100 crore bill has been announced as a zero coupon bill zero coupon bill. this is called a zero coupon bill so what is the meaning of this zero coupon bill means no interest is paid no interest is paid means it is called a discounted bill what what is going to happen here means it is a bill of 100 crores but it will be given only for 98 crores or something called 98.5 crores whatever it may be so a 100 crores bill is given just for 98 crores or 98.5 crores and that difference that is either 2 crores or 1.5 crores is the discount given by the government that is what is called discounted bill on the actual value of bill some concession was given on that concession that discount is nothing but the discounted bill and, and that discount is the profit why that discount is the profit means at the maturity, the same bill will be taken back by the government yet full value. That means, government is issuing this bill of 100 crores for just 98 crores. But while taking back this bill, government is paying the full amount 100 crores. So instead of giving an interest to him, it is giving a discount as the profit. And that discount is nothing but the profit and such bills are called discounted bills so usually discounted bills will have the zero coupon rate so usually we uh, regularly uh, see in the newspapers that the RBI may further discount the bills the RBI may further benefit the banks by discounting what is the discounting means okay uh, this uh, bill is or this bond is for this value you pay this much that's enough that is the discount the RBI gives and that discounting is the profit of banks but I am explaining you this at a single bond you assume it at the high level bonds how much profit they are going to get it will be in 100 crores and then there are many bills it may be even 1000 crores so this is what is a discounted bill and this is how to understand a zero coupon and zero coupon bill. Are there any such zero coupon bills till now? You should understand one thing. All the treasury bills are zero coupon bills. All, all the treasury bills are zero coupon bills. They are not given any interest rate. They are given at a discounted price. And so there will not be any interest. That means there will not be any coupon rate paid on them. So all the treasury bills. I wrote here. 91 days. 182 days. 364 days. All the treasury bills are. Zero coupon bills. They are not paid any coupon rate. They are not paid any interest rate. That is what is. <coughs> discounted bills or zero coupon bills. And T bills are such. Zero coupon bills. And let us discuss about fixed coupon and floating coupon. Fixed coupon as well as floating coupon. Both of these are not related to either T bills or to discounted bills. Why? Fixed coupon and floating coupon. Both of these are related to bonds. That is already you know government securities government securities of long tenure above one year above one year are called bonds and only in these bonds fixed coupon rate as well as floating coupon rate will be considered. 
you can easily understand fixed coupon rate means a fixed interest rate will be assigned to that bond floating coupon rate means variably changing interest rate is fixed here so the interest rate will be changing from time to time on that particular bond that is fixed coupon rate and floating coupon rate these two are especially used only for bonds bonds means long tenured government securities which are above one year the maximum period the maximum period for a bond is 30 years the maximum period for a bond is 30 years so because of this long tenure usually in the past bonds have been issued on a fixed coupon rate most of the bonds issued till now by the Indian government and RBI are fixed coupon bonds whereas coming to floating coupon bonds these floating coupon bonds are nowadays issued and here what happens you know the interest rate will be changing from time to time and the change in the interest rate is directly dependent on the weighted average weighted average in the change in the profit that comes through the preceding three treasury bills observe clearly in the floating coupon rate the interest rate changes that is the coupon rate changes and it is directly dependent on the change in the profit yielded by the preceding three treasury bills the preceding three treasury bills so depending on the change in the profit of the preceding three treasury bills now here the change comes in the coupon rate in floating coupon rate you may ask how they are considering the T bills treasury bills because treasury bills are for 91 days 182 days 364 days uh, just we have discussed now so in one year we cannot expect more and more or many changes comes in the price values so considering the T bills is not a problem almost the change in the interest rate or change in the profit from the treasury bills will give a correct assumption to bring a change in this floating coupon rate because the T bills will explain the present scenario of prices since they are short term they will explain the present scenario of prices so depending on them the floating coupon rate will be decided <coughs> and this floating coupon rate will be decided for every half yearly for every half yearly why why because in these bonds in these bonds of long tenure the coupon rate that is interest that is profit is settled for every six months it is settled for every six months so that means for every six months means half yearly settlement of coupon rate is carried on by the PDO department I already explained you in the previous class PDO public distribution uh, pub, uh, public debt office PDO that will look over the settlement of the coupon rate every six months now these fixed coupon as well as floating coupon which are related to bonds that means long tenure government securities are made some changes they have some restrictions what are the restrictions see now I got a uh, government bond of long tenure now what happens this long tenured government bond is going to affect 
is going to get the effect from the inflation and this inflation for example due to inflation if the currency is losing value but I bought the bond before the inflation comes now what happens I may get a loss because of the losing a uh, loss in the value of currency so for getting a for buying a government bond now I am incurring losses to get out of the losses and to protect the people who are buying these bonds as well as to protect the banks and institutions government of India introduced a new type of bonds what are they we will discuss now newly introduced different types of bonds by government of India are now let us see capital index bonds inflationary indexed bonds capital indexed bonds capital indexed bonds have been already issued and inflationary indexed bonds are yet to be issued they are under review what is this see I already told you that the one who is buying these bonds may get or may incur some losses due to inflation when inflation rises the money loses its value so he may not get the actual value so he is losing because of inflation to protect the bond holder from this inflation government of India introduced these capital indexed bonds what happens here the principal amount of the bond so whatever the principal amount of the bond for example say the principal amount of a bond is 1000 crores this principal is this principal is indexed to the wholesale price index the principal amount is indexed to the wholesale price index at the final time so what is the value of the principal that rises due to the effect of inflation or WPI that final value will be paid at the time of maturity to the bond holder so he will be protected from inflation what is happening the principal will be indexed to the final maturity time WPA what is the wholesale price index at the time of maturity to that this principal will be raised and that final amount will be handed over to the bond holder so he will be protected from inflation and the coupon rate goes in a regular manner whereas for inflationary index bonds here the principal as well as coupon rate both are indexed to WPA from the beginning itself from the beginning itself means at the initial stages itself the principal amount will be indexed to the WPA and if the WPA changes the value of principal changes so every time the coupon rate as well as money paid will also change that means there is only one difference between these two types of bonds here the compensation to be paid because of inflation will be handed over at the end whereas in inflationary indexed bonds the compensation will be handed over regularly depending upon the change in the inflation and considering the WPI for every half a year at the time of settlement but these type of inflationary indexed bonds are yet to be introduced they are under review so I hope you understood capital indexed bonds means the principal amount is indexed to the WPA wholesale price index 
at the time of maturity. So this thousand crores will be compared with the WPA at the time of maturity and the principal amount will be raised to that WPI and that final amount will be paid in capital indexed bonds whereas the coupon rate that is interest coupon rate means interest that will be paid on a pre-agreed terms but whereas in inflationary indexed bonds at the beginning itself the principal as well as coupon rate are indexed to the inflation so if the inflation rises the principal amount rises and the interest paid interest to be paid on the raised principal will be paid if the principal rises due to inflation automatically the money to be paid in the form of coupon rate also increases why principal is rising so the coupon rate value also rises in that way in inflationary indexed bonds regularly the inflation as well as WPA will be considered and in regular intervals considering the WPA and its change the compensation will be paid to the bond holder. So here regular compensation will be paid in inflationary indexed bonds. In capital indexed bonds it is not regular but a final settlement of compensation will be paid in capital indexed bonds. So these are the different types of bonds. There is one more bond, very rare bond to be discussed, sovereign bonds. These sovereign bonds are issued by RBI in a very 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 rare cases. Sovereign bonds are independent bonds. Independent bonds and they are issued to very very high level primary dealers and most of the sovereign bonds, most, most of the sovereign bonds are issued in foreign currency. So if a bond is issued in foreign currency, one way we can confirm that it is a sovereign bond bond. These are the most frequent type of bonds as well as government securities issued by RBI on behalf of government of India. And I already told you, state governments had no power to issue treasury bills. State governments can only issue bonds. We may call the bonds issued by central government as government securities and bonds but whereas these bonds which are issued that means government securities issued by state governments for a longer tenure are called state developmental loans SDL state Developmental Loans State Developmental Loans We call them SDLs SDLs <coughs> Now Who are the Eligible Entities Or organizations Or banks Or big players that are permitted to take part in this competitive bidding of government securities or bonds. Who are they? See, there is a central clearance system of RBI. Let me clear this on board. Central clearance system of RBI CCS Central Clearance System of RBI. This will make the settlement of bonds and the corresponding money. So
bonds to the buyer money to the seller that is RBA so this process bonds to the buyer money to RBA this settlement is carried out by central clearance system of RBI. It is a simultaneous process. A single time simultaneous electronic process carried and <coughs> looked over by CCS. And the people who are permitted to participate in this competitive bidding system is we call them as Guild Edged Market Participants Guild Edged Market Participants What is this Guild Edged Market? See, you actually know stock markets and how the people trade in the stock markets Consider a person And if this fellow is trading in the stock markets NSE and Sensex He cannot directly trade in the stock markets He need a DMAT account He need a DMAT account, it is a trading account So to buy and sell the shares in the stock markets, he needs a DMAT or trading account. We call it as DMAT account, which is a trading account. He takes this DMAT account from one eligible stock broker. Those stock brokers are given licenses by the stock markets. So, those licensed stock brokers will maintain the DMAT accounts of public and these people will carry on their deals through this DMAT account. So the trading account of an individual to buy and sell the shares is a DMAT account and simultaneously <coughs> the trading account of banks the trading account of banks as well as the trading account of financial organizations entities and the trading account of big players for buying and trading government securities and bonds is a guilt edged account <coughs> DMAT account for an individual for trading shares is almost equal to guilt edged account of banks and financial organizations to buy and sell the government securities or bonds. So, guilt edged account means simply demarket account of banks <coughs> and other financial institutions and big players and what they trade with that demat account, that guilt edged account, they trade in government securities and bonds. We call the share market as a stock market. So, we call this government securities and bonds trading market as guilt edged market so now in that guilt edged market who are the participants means RBI has given licenses to some uh, banks very 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 eligible banks they are called as primary dealers and those primary dealers will have a aggregate trading account with RBI and those primary dealers are given licenses to provide guilt edged accounts to other institutions and individuals for trading in government securities and bonds. So how it goes? RBI RBI to primary dealers these primary dealers are big banks like ICICI 
city bank sbi etc and from these primary dealers other people either they may be other banks or financial institutions or big retailers and other eligible people or organizations so through these primary dealers these four different types of eligible participants will participate in the competitive bidding of government securities and bonds by rbi and for that they need to maintain some gilt edged accounts with these primary dealers banks like icici city and sbi and they have to transfer their money to these gilt edged accounts from this gilt edged accounts these primary dealers transfer the money to rbi and rbi will transfer the government securities or bonds through its ccs central clearance system at a single point of time that is simultaneously into their electronic gilt edged accounts so this is how <coughs> the bonds or government securities are auctioned right i hope you understood all these government securities and bonds so bonds means nothing but an confirmation given by rbi that government has taken some debt by promising a bond that's it so it is a, not a, any file or anything a financial gazette announcing it it as a bond and the announcement will be confirmed by rbi right i hope you understood this topic in the next video we will discuss about marginal standing facility liquidity adjustment facility as well as why rbi is playing with this type of different powers and what it plays actually with these powers so that will be discussed in the next video and one more time i am announcing you that a complete pack of 20 dvds of indian history as well as indian economy are ready once you place the order for them you will get those dvds in 8 to 12 days and in the previous video i made the announcement and thank you for your response already 44 orders were booked thank you very much for your good response and i already told you first 200 will be given first 200 will be given them for a price of 1700 for a price of 1700 and the remaining people after the 200 you will get them for 2200 rupees here 1500 is for dvds and 200 is for <coughs> courier charges and here also 2000 is the actual price of the dvds 200 is the courier charges if you take this order before december 5th you will get them for this price and once you take this order you will be given a one year free subscription for the website success in civils.in where you can find all the civil services mains material and daily hindu newspaper analysis which is very important for gs mains papers as well as for current affairs for civils and you can get all the ebook materials which will be uploaded to that website and the thorough guidance from our our team and apart from that illustrative indian economy is an ebook if you take this order that ebook is also free for you it is the book where the principles of economy including micro and macro economic principles they are explained relating them to the society with simple examples 
even a non arts student also can understand so in that way you can get them so your others will encourage us financially to publish more and more works from our side anyway thank you very much for your cooperation so i hope you consider this offer thank you